So the next step is going to be to work out our processing routine. We're going to work out how we are going to need to process the image collection in order to come up with these um, two images to compare and show change. So um, the first thing I'm asking you to do is go to the L5 page on the Earth Engine data catalog and grab their script for scale factors. So here's, here's essentially what I'm asking you to do. I'm going to open up a new tab and go type in Earth Engine Data Catalog. And um, I'd like you to go to the Earth Engine Data Catalog. And at the kind of blue bar here at the top, if we go one, two, three, fourth from the left, there's Landsat. And I'd like you to click on that. And it's going to take us to all the Landsat collections. We're going to talk more about this in a, in a lecture probably tomorrow or very soon about what the collections and tiers and Landsat numbers are. Um, we're going to be working with Landsat 5 today. The main thing, um, Landsat 5 is one of my favorites. It's uh, because it's a bit like Wally. It just it's it just kind of kept on kept on working and 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 collecting data long past its uh, design life. So it collected images from 1984 to 2012, and it had the longest run of any individual um, Landsat satellite. So we're going to go into the Landsat 5 TM, and there's some different products here. There's raw images, top of atmosphere, and surface reflectance. We're going to work with the surface reflectance today, and we'll talk more about what these different products are in a um, in lecture. So if I just go under surface reflectance, we're going to go right to level two, collection two, tier one, and uh, that should be the same address that we uh, used in the uh, when when you loaded the image collection. So the idea here is that the bands, we're going to be working with these six bands um, that all have to do with uh, either visible or non-visible light. And so they're numbered one, two, three, four, five, and seven. And you'll see that the range of data values is, is really reflective of the data type. This is an integer data type, so it can store values from one to 65,455. And then there's the scale factor that we would need to multiply. And then there's this offset that we would have to add. It's a, it's a negative number, but we would add the negative number. Um, and, uh, and that, by scaling it and offsetting it, we would get the correct reflectance value. And we'll talk about what reflectance means. It's a ratio, and we'll talk about it in lecture. But the key idea is that in order to get the meaningful um, observation value, we have to apply a scale and an offset. And if you screws down, what you'll see is that the developers at Google have given us a handy function that will automatically scale our optical and our thermal bands and, uh, and kind of do this processing step for us. So rather than having to re recreate the wheel here, I'm just going to copy what they've done. So I I started, um, I just clicked on the curly bracket and then just drug it up until I got to the to comment the comment up there. And I'm going to hit Command-C on, on a Mac or Control-C to copy that. And then I'm going to go back over to my script and reveal what I was asking you to do. And nope, I didn't. I'm just going to paste this in for now because I forgot to actually go over here, copy this, go over here, and... Uh, copy that in and then sorry for that but I think you can work around that this is where I'm asking you to get the scaling factors so don't worry about you'll notice um, that it, it looks a little bit different they are defining a function using a different syntax than um, what I taught you the other day don't worry about it um, there is this thing called apply scale factors that takes an image that is a function and uh, and then this is what it does so um, and uh, I think because they didn't use the var equal, they don't have to put a semicolon at the end, but whatever, like small details, not, not too big a deal. Key thing is that we now have a function that does some of our work for us. So let's kind of keep moving on. Um, what we want to do is we want to take this IC. So now I'm going to switch to like, let's think about the workflow that we have to do. We want to take this image collection and we're going to do a bunch of things to it. The first thing, if I like, if I went up here and said, um, uh, "Print the size," um, it it would probably.
take a while. Let's see if it can even do it or if it gets mad at me. Um, but if I ask it like, hey, how many images are in the Landsat 5 collection? It's probably gonna work on that for a long time, right? Because this thing has been collecting images for a long time, right? So um, it's gonna work, work, work. So let's, uh, let's give it a break and say, I'm just kidding, don't really need you to do that. Um, but go over to here and start kind of filtering this big image collection so that we have a smaller number of images, eventually just one good image from from what we uh, from what we want. So uh, for Shanghai in um, in uh, 19, what are we going to go for? 1984. In the spring of 1984, we're going to try to get an image for Shanghai. OK, so the first thing I'm actually going to do is the filter bounds geometry and just say, please give me all of the images in this collection that intersect that point that we defined up here. And I'm gonna call it geometry. And, uh, and then I'm gonna go here and say, let's see how many practice.size is gonna tell me how many images. It was still working on that. Okay, so 326 images are in the Landsat collection for Shanghai. That's that's pretty good. So now let's see how many, let's do our next step. So if this is kind of like filter by location, um, the next thing we wanna do is filter by year. So let's say filter, EE, -E, big F filter, calendar range, parentheses, and then I'd like to go for 1984. So that's the start year. That's the end year, and we're asking to do this for years. Um, and so if that was filtered by location, this is going to be filtered by time. And if I hit run, I should go from 326 to just five. Um, well, that's interesting. So there's only five images of Shanghai in 1984 that are in this collection. Um, let's see if I can get down even further and say, well, I'm not only am I interested in 1984, but let's say that we're interested in the spring. And I'm going to say uh, four to six and then um, month. So anything that was April, taken April, May, June, I'm going to consider uh, springtime. Like, uh, I'm going to say season, and if this is by like year, if that's fair, and say run. And it didn't like that because I misspelled it. So, uh, huh. is it happier? And I should say calendar range. Run. So cool, we've got one. Um, I'm going to go a little bit further here, and uh, let's just say uh, practice and. Uh, put a comma here and say run and say, okay, this thing is still an image collection. So now let me say practice first. And it's an image collection that has one image on it. But if I say first, I can return the image rather than the image collection. And then I'm going to go in here and, and look at the properties and see that, okay, it actually has, um, uh, a lot of properties that are associated with this image. And um, so that sounds good. Um, and I'll come back and I might have to adjust this later. But the last thing I want to do is convert the data that are in this, um, all of these bands, basically. I'd like to convert them uh, from the weird uh, integer that they're stored in to the reflectance value. So the very last thing I'm going to do here is say okay, dot map the apply scale factors. Right, and I'm, I'm pretty horrible typer. So how about if I just copy that, paste it in there and, uh, and run it? Because by right, do you remember that? That we're going to map this function and to every image in this image collection. There's only one image, so it's not a big deal. Um, but that seems like it it worked okay. Um, and so uh, great. So I think we have it. And.
and I'm not going to display this image yet, but what I've done is um, is worked through a a processing workflow um, that works at least for our first year and um, gives us one image and we can look here and see that the image is relatively cloud free. There's not many clouds over the whole thing. It looks like 2% of the land has has clouds on it. So not a lot. And uh, that sounds pretty good. We're not going to look at it just yet, but we're going to hit save and the next and uh, and then continue to work on this workflow routine in the next step.